At three and a half, Chandler is a boisterous, bright little boy who brings laughter and joy to his parents and sister. But there was a time in the not-so-distant past when this family was in danger of being ripped apart. I was literally smelling him because I wasn't sure that we were going to get him back. Chandler was born premature with a host of health problems, including a hole in his lung. He spent the first week of his life at the hospital. After he was released, his parents, Tara and Michael Crady, said they noticed one of his ankles felt strange and brought it up to a pediatrician. And the next morning, we got a phone call saying, you know, were you in a car accident? Was there some sort of trauma during your pregnancy? And I said no, and I said why? And they said, well, it's a healed fracture, and it would date back to, like, in utero. From there, it was back to OSF St. Francis for more testing. But what was supposed to be a routine follow-up x-ray quickly escalated. As the Cradies were told, Chandler had 14 healed fractures, including 12 along his ribs and spots of blood on his brain. He said we called DCFS, and, you know, either this is an injury or there's a medical issue. Michael and Tara said they understood the hospital had a legal obligation to investigate, but were nonetheless shocked to find themselves accused. You're hoping, praying, that there is something wrong medically with your child. You're, <laughs> it's, it's such a backwards feeling because you're sitting in the hospital and you're like, oh my gosh, like they think we abused our child. Please let this test come back positive. The Cradies say they were forced to stay at OSF under constant supervision for the next week, while DCFS called in a child abuse pediatrician, Dr. Channing Petrak, the medical director of the Pediatric Resource Center. In her report provided by the family, Dr. Petrak ruled the fractures and other injuries were suspicious of abuse. I specifically asked the DCFS worker, are you going to take him? And she said that remains to be seen. That's when Tara remembered the story of another mom featured in the Pekin Daily Times years ago who said she'd been falsely accused of child abuse by the same doctor. While we were in the hospital, I contacted Michelle Weiner and she got me in contact with this radiologist out of Springfield. And by the grace of God, he met us at like 6.30 at night at the hospital. That doctor was David Ayub, a radiologist who specializes in these types of cases. No, no question in my mind there, there was their abnormal bones. The bones showed fragility. From Chandler's x-rays and interviews with the family, Dr. Ayub determined Chandler had metabolic bone disease, possibly infantile rickets, and said the healed fractures that appeared on those x-rays dated back to in utero and or the birthing process. If the ribs are weak at birth and the child passes through the birth canal, what happens is those ribs don't hold up, so they are pushed into the lung tissue with much greater force than they would otherwise. Dr. Ayub said that would account for the punctured lung, noting other evidence he felt medically explained the other injuries described in Dr. Petrak's report. In all, the Crady sought out a total of eight medical experts, including a Boston University endocrinologist, Dr. Michael Hollick, who agreed with Ayub's findings and testified Chandler also likely had a collagen disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Hollick said that would be enough to, quote, markedly increase the risk for fractures with normal handling. However, these are emerging theories that Ayub himself admits are not yet widely accepted in the medical community. We tried to talk to Dr. Petrak, but her employer, the University of Illinois College of Medicine of Peoria, told us, quote, because of patient confidentiality, we cannot comment on or provide patient information. However, they did connect us with another child abuse pediatrician out of Minnesota who was not affiliated with the Crady case, but disagrees with Hollick's and Ayub's theories in other cases like these. To suggest that we have bones so weak that they fracture with routine care as a result of rickets with no other signs is not a logical conclusion. Still, multiple experts for the family felt otherwise. That included a neurosurgeon from the University of Chicago who noted signs of old blood on the brain could have certainly been caused by the trauma of birth, given a condition Chandler was born with that left fluid between his skull and brain. Medical disputes aside, the Crady said they tried to point to their good character, noting the frequency with which they'd been taking Chandler to the doctor for even the slightest ailment, including strange red spots that doctors since birth had been unable to diagnose. But when one of those spots reappeared early on in the DCFS investigation, the Crady said a doctor called that in, and DCFS came knocking on their door in the middle of the night. They called my brother and said, where is Chandler? We're looking for him. And uh, because there's been the second hotline call, we need to know he's okay. And Ryan said, I can assure you, 
he is fine. I'm looking at him. Tara says their doctors later linked those spots to Chandler's collagen disorder. However, at the time, they were ordered to move in with her parents and could no longer be alone with their young son. We feel like time was stolen. You know, those beautiful, nice, first everything, we really weren't able to enjoy. Still, the family continued to be proactive. They spent $25,000 on six different attorneys, including Tim McCarthy, who said he was quickly convinced of the family's innocence. Once I met them and I started seeing the evidence, I thought, no, no, these people are not capable of abusing their child. They didn't do this. We need to get this resolved as quickly as we can. McCarthy says the Cradies voluntarily took a polygraph test and passed, but it still didn't change the status of their case. That's when Michael says he considered more drastic measures. I remember having a discussion with Tara and, and, and telling her we, there's too much against us. Um, I told her, uh, I'm just, I'm going to tell him I did it. Uh, I'll, I'll take the blame. Um, you know, you can take care of the kids and... Sorry, it's, uh, I was close. Um, she talked me out of it. <laughs> Finally, they said they got a break in the form of a technicality when an attorney discovered that the initial judge to sign off at a preliminary hearing actually felt the state didn't show there was probable cause of abuse, a detail that was somehow previously overlooked in court paperwork. Because of that, the law dictates that the case has to be dismissed. And so it was, 10 months after the allegations were first made. But the Cradies say that wasn't the end, claiming DCFS kept the case open for a total of 693 days. Ultimately, they claim it was involvement from the Attorney General's office that brought their nightmare to an end. A representative from DCFS who declined to go on camera told us over the phone it was a, quote, difficult case, adding it was, quote, well argued on both sides, saying that as social workers, it is their job to protect children, and they're often presented with conflicting information. As for the Cradies, they say oh, Chandler is doing you. well these days and that life is hugs. mostly back to normal. Oh, I guess if there's a blessing in all of this is he has no idea that any of this happened. And as a parent, that is a very beautiful thing. And they're not alone. There have been other headlines in the news in recent years of families who say they too have been wrongfully accused, including the Peoria mother who first helped the Cradies. Michelle Widener says her youngest son was just five weeks old in the ICU fighting for his life due to a then undiagnosed genetic condition when it happened. When they did the CT scan, he moved in the machine, which resulted in a blurred line, and that blurred line was misdiagnosed as a skull fracture. So coming up tomorrow night, we're going to hear more in part two from Michelle, that mother you just saw there on how she says that impacted her family and how it's prompted her to step forward to try to help others who appear to be wrongfully accused as part of the newly formed Family Justice Resource Center. It's a statewide organization. She must feel that there are enough parents like that in the same kind of situation that they need a place to converse. She said they're dealing with 11 cases in the state of Illinois alone right now, but obviously there was so much more we couldn't include in this story. We are including additional details online in our website, week.com. All right, we have Chuck's full forecast.